On this week's Flame Central, the Flames go down to Georgia, looking to take control of the A-Sun Conference. Plus, the women try to extend their win streak to 10. And we introduce you to one former Flame in the NBA and another that's close to reaching the big leagues. It all starts now. This is Flame Central. We are coming down the home stretch of the college basketball season, and do we ever have you covered on this week's show? Welcome on into Flame Central. As always, she's Emily Austin. I'm Matt Warner. Matt, we're not just talking hoops this week, though. No. With spring training starting up in Major League Baseball, we have a story about a former Flame to bring you as well. But we have to start with the biggest game of the A-Sun season for Liberty Hoops. Yeah, that sounds like an exaggeration. I can tell you that it is not. Liberty and Kennesaw State Meeting on Thursday night, the Flames and Owls entered this game tied atop the A-Sun Conference. The winner, in all likelihood, would end up with the number one seed and home court advantage in the conference tourney. So obviously a lot on the line in this one, and Liberty's Darius McGee would come to play. Remember, he scored 47 the last time he saw the Owls, and it looked like he might do it again. McGee would score the Flames' first 10 points on the night. Darius, flat out dealing. You would end up with 22 points in the first half, and the Flames led 41-36 at the break. Second half, Kyle Rode had a flurry. Back-to-back -back three pointers would push Liberty's lead to 14. Would they be able to pull away? Yeah, not so fast. KSU started chipping away. A team that's made a habit of coming back from double-digit deficits this season would do it again. Despite a season-high 43 points from Darius McGee, the Owls would not be denied. All five starters scored in double digits as they come back to win 88-81, their first win against the Flames in 10 tries. So what does it all mean? Well, it means that the A-Sun Championship in all likelihood now runs through Kennesaw, Georgia. The Owls move into first place in the conference and in essence, because of the tiebreaker, have a two game lead over Liberty with three regular season games remaining. The Flames now shift their focus to securing the number two seed heading into the postseason. All right, the madness of March is definitely upon us. Hey, speaking of hoops, you know, Michael Jordan once said, my pain was my motivation. Or was that Kyle Rode? I don't know, doesn't matter. For some reason, Kyle's favorite moment in a Liberty uniform was also a painful one. And as you're about to see, it was well worth it. My name is Kyle Rode. I'm a forward for Liberty Men's Basketball, and this is my favorite moment. It was actually kind of, kind of a half. We were playing Lipscomb at home. It was actually my career high. He gives it to a cutting road off the window, and it goes down. <laughs> they have awoken Kyle Rode. Asana Sajo hit me with an unintentional elbow uh, on a post up. Kyle Rode is apparently bleeding, so they'll get him out of the ball game for a moment. Take care of that as he got a lip busted, it appears. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I thought I could play through it, and uh, it was bleeding pretty bad. So go over to Shrine. I'm like, Shrine, I think my tooth went through my lip. And he, he looks at it tells Doc to get the stitches ready, but he was actually able to clot it on the bench. It was funny, like, it was what Shrine used to clot it. It was just, like, so, like, sticky. So just to talk kind of hurt, and Coach McKay's yelling, when can he go back in? And uh, go back in a few minutes later, and uh, I don't think I missed a shot the rest of the game. Swing it around, Kyle Rode, an open triple. That's good. A little blood doesn't stop Kyle Rode. <laughs> Down the paint, finds Rode left corner three. Yes, sir, Kyle Rode. 17 tonight. He gives it up to Rode. He's left open top of the key. That goes down. Pass left wing to Rode. Long three. Boom. Kyle Rode. The pump fake. That rims off. And there's oh. Kyle Rode. Tipping it in with the left hand. His career night continues. Everybody was super encouraging. I think it was my game high in threes. I think I had about six threes. And Lipscomb is always one of our rivals, so it was super, super cool to do it in front of Flames Nation here at Liberty Arena. He's just doing such great things, playing with such confidence, just makes this team, just gives them another layer of scoring, making Liberty just that much tougher to play against. I remember after the game, I couldn't eat, so I had a smoothie after the game, and I was, I was starving. And, but we won the game, so the pain was worth it, and it was one of those games you'll never forget.
Well, the pain was worth it. That might be my favorite Kyle Road moment as well. Love the toughness oh, yeah. that he showed in that ball game. All right, one thing we know about all these players, they all want to make it to the NBA, right? right? And recently, we caught up with one who has. Yeah, former Flame Alex McLean isn't playing in the NBA, but he is helping others be their best as an assistant coach with the Washington yeah. Wizards. We have a great future story we'll share with you in the coming weeks. But for now, we wanted to give you a quick introduction to the Liberty alum. I fell in love with the process and getting guys better and pouring in and being a servant. You know, once you're following the path of fulfillment that you want to be on, then there is no second guessing. You put gas in the jet? Thrill, you flying today? And if the NBA calls, you always say yes. So, you know, in 2018, I took that opportunity and, and here I am on year five. I got deep drop, I got deep drop. Oh gosh, ooh, ooh. That's nice, Kisberg. Come here, come here, come here. Three-man action. Oh, uh, him back, come here. Oh, God. Oh, that's nice, Coach. You have to put your ego aside in a lot of ways in this role because you're constantly serving somebody else, pouring into somebody else. And at times, that could be taxing. Get up. Nice, good touch. But if the overall theme for your life or, or what you're called to do, and if it's servanthood and it's to get guys better and that's truly your purpose, then that's what you have to do. Time it, time it, time it. Then when he comes, boom. Let's go from slow, fast. Slow, fast, time it up with the screen. Right to your spot. Set it up, do it, nice, get out. Oh, there you go. There you go, perfect, perfect. Let's go over the top, going right, going right. Ready, good feet, hit, uh, get up. Huh. Nice, this one, good, good, good. More contact, it's gotta be a lot of body contact. Shot blockers, hit, good, tough, much better. Uh, right at me, everything's a deep drop. You gotta eat this space, you gotta eat this space, let's go. Being able to have that one-on-one -on -one or whatever it is to pour into a guy and I get to exude my craft, and they're receptive of it, and it's like kind of a give and take relationship. So, you know, that's when I feel most fulfilled. I'm at joy and I'm not really thinking about anything else. Time to do some real work. It was great getting to know Alex. Can't wait to share with you what he's doing off the court. Okay, I'm not trying to do the whole broadcaster's curse thing, but I just wanted to remind you the women's basketball team has not lost a game since January 12th. That's over a month ago. And these aren't just close calls or buzzer beaters. In nine straight victories, the Lady Flames have won by an average of almost 14 points per game. Can they keep it going on the road at Queens and make it 10 straight? Emma Hess says yes. She came out firing in the first quarter. She drained three triples in the first frame alone and finished with nine. Liberty led by eight at the break, but here comes Kennedy Williams. The Lady Flames opened the second half with a 19-6 run, and Williams contributed seven to the surge. And Liberty goes on to make it 10 in a row and will look to extend that streak as they return home for the next three games. Well, the athletes on the court get most of the recognition, which is well-deserved. But there's also a support staff behind the scenes that helps make sure everything runs smoothly. We like to highlight them when we get the chance, and today is one of those opportunities. Get to know Emma Farrar and the role she plays for Liberty Women's Hoops. Hi, guys. My name is Emma Farrar. Welcome to my home away from home. I say I'm the mom of the team, just being able to take care of the girls, make sure they have everything that they need to thrive during practice, during games, and also during traveling, and just making sure that everything's set up for the coaches um, and the support staff, just making sure that everyone's comfortable and feels like they have a place here. What makes me thrive and happy in Liberty Women's Basketball is being able to have that connection with the girls and just coming to see their faces every day. Um, and be able to talk to them because they're not only just players, they also have uh, emotions and just being there for them and also them being there for me. Not only do I spend time in here during practice, I also do laundry. So I come in after practice, making sure that they have all their stuff washed and ready for practice the next day. And I go ahead and know that it's theirs because it's labeled with their loop. Another very important role in my job is making sure the basketballs are always out no matter what, because you can't play basketball without a basketball. It wouldn't be a very fun game. And I start setting up the bench, setting up the coaches' chairs, making sure there's water bottles. 
I need to make sure there's sweat towels, make sure everyone has towels for after the game to shower. That was quite the day. The best part is I get to do it again for the next game. See y'all out on the court. Great to have Emma on the mountain. All right, to the diamond. If you know anything about Liberty softball coach Dot Richardson, you know she's going to challenge her team to play against the best of the best. They've already proved that this season. Liberty's next test, her alma mater, number two in the nation, UCLA, where she was a national champion, a three-time All-American. And if you're wondering, yes, Dot is in the program's Hall of Fame. All right, but let's get to the game and start it off in the top of the second. The Lady Flames trailing 2 nothing until Ray Green sends this one back to Lynchburg. That ball is smoked. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie ball game. UCLA tries to respond in the bottom of the second. Two runners on. But second baseman Rachel Crane with a quick reaction. She gets a 6-4-3 double play to end the inning. Later in the fifth, Kennedy Powell base hit up the middle. Liberty's Mary Claire Wilson trying to get the runner at home, but her throw is not on time. The Bruins go on to take the game in a close one. Final score, 3-2. All right, coming up, we hear from one of the new members of the Liberty football staff about what's on the horizon. Plus, hear from a former Flames pitcher who's knocking on the door of the big leagues. That's all when Flames Central returns. Welcome to Liberty University's online programs, where living out your calling with integrity is what you train to do. And getting ready for the future doesn't mean missing out on the now. Because a university is more than buildings and books. And an education should set you free, not fence you in. Welcome to Liberty's global campus, where distance learning was pioneered and evolved into one of the top-ranked schools in the nation. Where protecting your budget, your time, and your education isn't just a theory, it's our priority. Here, degrees in your field reflect industry demands and help you get ahead of the competition. Where college comes to you, but you can come to college too. Game day, homecoming, graduation day. Your school, your values, your experience, your choice. Welcome to Liberty University, where we train champions for Christ. So you're looking for a university that has anything you could possibly need. Anything? You want a place that has the programs you want to study. I think I'm going to sign up for the fashion design program. All right, a place with state-of-the-art facilities. <laughs> And who doesn't love big time sports? Somewhere you can hike, slide, climb, and most importantly, eat. And all that with a great view? Yeah, I think I know a place. At Liberty University, we don't just believe everyone should have access to higher education, we make it happen. That's why we are offering our Middle America Scholarship to help families like yours by providing over $20,000 over the course of four years. Money should not hold you back from the life-changing experience at Liberty University. Find out if you qualify for the Middle America Scholarship today. Welcome back to the show. Listen, I get it. When the Super Bowl ends, there's a football-sized void in your life. Well, do I have some good news for you, though? You won't have to wait until September to get back into Williams Stadium and watch the Flames. You can get your football fix a lot sooner than that. First-year head coach Jamie Chadwell recently announced Liberty's annual spring game will be held on Saturday, April 15th 
at 1.30 p.m. Your first chance to see the 2023 Flames on the field and see how this new offensive scheme looks should be a fun event. So go ahead and put it on your calendar. And plan on being there. Will do, Matt. Sounds like a good time and a great chance to see one of the new coaches who is behind that offensive scheme, co-offensive coordinator and running backs coach Newland Isaac, who took time out of his busy schedule to join us on the Flame Central podcast powered by Alcova Mortgage. He's been playing for and working with Coach Chadwell for 19 years, so he obviously knows this offense very well. Now it's time to teach it. What do you have to get done in spring this first season? Uh, as far as just football-wise um, for us, it's just kind of getting the base uh, playbook stuff that we're going to run. Um, and we're just trying to keep it as simple as possible um, yeah. before we kind of get into everything else. So that's the number one thing I would say. Hey, let's get the base fundamental stuff down first before we do anything else. And you can add, always add more places we've been, uh, we've been before. Um, you get to that third and fourth year, you can just kind of do whatever you right. want to do. But that first year is kind of just getting the base stuff down that you want to get accomplished. There is a lot to learn for these players, Flames Nation, so we're going to be very patient, right? Also, we might have a reality show in the making. Coach Isaac told us there's a group of the coaching staff all living together. If you want to hear more about that great conversation, the Flame Central Podcast powered by Alcova Mortgage. And hey, you can send in your questions because you might make the show Central at liberty.edu. I feel like we say this every year, but baseball season is already here. Earlier this week, Team Canada released its roster for the 2023 World Baseball Classic. And on that list, you'll find former Flames pitcher Noah Skiro. His childhood dream was to play in the big leagues. And despite a world pandemic getting in the way of the draft process, he's making his way toward accomplishing that goal. Since 1876, there have been 20,272 Major League Baseball players. Of those, 397 were born in Canada. Former Flames pitcher Noah Skiro wants to become number 398. When you think Canada, you usually think hockey. But for Skiro, his passion for baseball started early. I never played hockey. Um... Could never really skate, never figured it out. Our church actually had a, a trip to a Blue Jay game. Went, loved it, um, was sold ever since. Ninth or 10th grade, it became pretty apparent, like, okay, like if I have a future in college athletics, it's gonna be baseball. My dream school in high school was UNC. And so I would reach out and I was actually emailing Coach Jackson when he was there, because he was the recruiting coordinator at the time was sitting in a, a parking lot at a tournament or something and phone rings and it's it's Scott Jackson. I'm like, oh, okay, I answer it. And he's like, still like you to play for me. Just wanted to let you know it's gonna be at a different school. I just took the head job at Liberty. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, and I, I had known of Liberty and I knew that the school would fit well for me. Um, so it was a win-win. In his first two years at Liberty, Noah firmly established himself in the starting rotation. Then as a junior, he was sailing along with a 1.96 ERA and projected to be an early round draft pick. But then, COVID. The season was brought to an abrupt halt and the MLB draft was reduced down to five nerve-wracking rounds. It was a weekend Noah will never forget. The whole draft process was by far the most stressful day of my life and it was just absolute chaos. I was getting phone calls of like, will you sign for this amount? And it's like, well, that's, those don't line up with what it should be. Um, my agent's like, I can't believe this guy just signed for this in this round. It was just absolute chaos. And with it only being five rounds, it was one day. Normally it's three and it was one day done. And it was just, when it was over, it was over. Noah wouldn't hear his name called that day. All he could do was wait. The Sunday morning, um, at like 9 a.m. was when teams could reach out for free agency. And I got a phone call right at 9 a.m. And by 9.30, I had 23 voicemails from 23 different teams. Of those 23 teams, Noah would choose to sign with the Phillies. Since then, in the space of two years, he's experienced the entire spectrum of minor league baseball from the rookie league all the way up to triple A. I started in high A, um, so which is rare. Mostly you, you work your way up, bottom up. 
strike. That one check swing and a miss. He went around strike three. Noah Skiro looks yes. very good out of Liberty University. That's his fifth strikeout already. Then I got hurt, went down to, to, to rookie ball. That's a totally different world. I mean, you're playing on chain link fence fields. You're in Florida in the summer. It's, it's brutal down there. In AA, you get guys that have big league experience. Right-hander fires. Swing and a miss, he got him. Boy, good morning, good afternoon, good night. He fans in the side. Ski roll now has five in the ball game. In order to survive in AA, you have to be more disciplined and more both on the field and off the field with your own personal stuff. You have to be more buttoned up. Um, and then you get the AAA, and it's, it's grown man baseball. First pitch and pops it up to shallow center. Ali Castillo back paddling out the second baseman's underneath of it. He makes the catch. And that is six shutout innings for Noah Skiro in his AAA debut. Having gone through all of this, Noah is now more confident than ever that the big leagues are in his future. I truly believe like if I do my job and I take care of what I need to take care of, that it's definitely a possibility as early as this season. And yet, he understands that nothing is guaranteed. You can have one game where you have it all figured out, but it's like that one game's not gonna get you promoted. You gotta do it for a month or two months or three months. You can do everything you're supposed to, and if there's no spot for you, you don't move. While a life in baseball is full of uncertainties, there has been and will continue to be one constant in Noah's life, and that's his faith. There's so much that goes on that's out of your control as it is. So there's a lot of trust in, okay, Lord, like if this is what you've called me to do, I trust that you're gonna help me get there and I'm gonna do everything in my power to be ready for when my name is called. But I trusting that when my name's called, it's you that has done the work to get me there. I don't know how guys do it without some kind of faith in, in the Lord and trusting that, you know, there's a hand in play in their lives that's beyond what they see in front of them. Uh, best of luck to Noah yeah. Skiro. Looking forward to seeing how he plays for the Canada team at World Baseball yes. Classic. Let's and go. from one Canadian, we turn to yeah. another now. Hello. Rhett McGiven joins us. <laughs> like how that worked out. Yeah. Warm, hot, and fuego. Top play player moment yeah. in the past week for Liberty Athletics. Rhett, let's start us off with a little warm. What do yeah, we got here? I don't actually have an overriding okay. theme today, but okay. there are certain holidays that got, kind of go unnoticed in the world, right? Oh, okay. And the, coming up this week, National Crab Stuff Flounder Day. I always miss that I one, know. and I find out about it after the fact. I know. I'm always so yeah. disappointed yeah. that I didn't get my Crab Stuff <laughs> Flounder. But, yeah. hey, life goes on. Yeah, right. That's what we say. You go down the road. <laughs> Kyle Road is warm this oh, week. Go and down you, the road. Yeah, Kyle yeah, Road. you like Man, that? Yeah. Your A game. Yeah, yeah, try. You know, you saw him earlier. Just a tough customer. Yeah. You know, he's getting hit in the left. He comes out, keeps battling against Eastern Kentucky. 17 points, 8 rebounds, 3 steals. He's one of those guys that really just does it all for your team. And when I look at Kyle, I'm like, I think he could provide more offense, but he doesn't need to. Yeah. He does, he fits into his role so well. He is bought in, and I think that's what Richie McKay does so well in his recruiting process. He's like, I could get players maybe that have a little bit more offensive productivity in their future, but I need the right fit. And yeah. Kyle Rode has been the right fit for Liberty for such a long time. Ten straight games in double figures. Yeah. Like he's um, just doing it all. Great offensive yes. run for him, and obviously the team's been playing well also. All right, for more, we go to hot. Paige Bachman. Yeah, softball. softball. Okay, so I fun little story here about Paige. Tell me. I looked at last year, okay? Yeah. How many innings did she pitch? I Any guesses? No. 1.2. No way. Already this season at 21.1. Wow. Coming in, you know, you're thinking maybe more first baseman, outfielder. Yeah. She's got some power in that bat. She did have some pitching in her resume, but yeah. comes in leading the team in innings pitch. Only two earned runs against UCLA. Hasn't given up a home run this year that's, either that's great. against some of the teams they've been playing. The page can keep developing. You know, she's got the height to be yeah. able to bring in some zip behind those pitches. She can get it up there. You could have a real gem on your hands, and, and we've seen her play in the outfield. Like She has some spectacular catches, and she does have pop in that bat. Could be a real five-tool athlete for you. So good to see her doing well in the circle. Yeah, the story coming into the season was her velocity went up like four or five yeah, miles per hour in the offseason. Right. So that is that is huge. Exciting. Right. Finally, in Fuego. Rhett, who is in Fuego this week? It's one of those athletes that have been around, and you feel like they've been a part of the program forever, and that's yeah. Callie Doan. Yeah. Callie Doan, you know, I when she finally leaves, it's going to be like a part of our family right. has left us. But she she cut off two seconds in a record for the Flames in the mile, a 436.52. 
She took down her coach, her Heather coach. Sagan Zeeland. Exactly. Second program record for her. She also holds one in the steeple chase. Great for Kelly. She has six ASUN individual titles, hopefully getting some more before her career is over. Coach Zeeland's like, I coached you too well. You broke my <laughs> yeah. record. Yeah, yeah. yeah good. Congrats true. to her. Yes. All right. Great job, as Thank always. You. Hey, don't go anywhere. More Flame Central coming up right after this. A college degree is more than a diploma. It's taking control of your future and finding that next step. At Liberty University, we not only care about your career, we also care about your calling. And we want to help you learn, develop, and grow so you can make an impact as a champion for Christ. Over 450 online programs, one you, infinite possibilities. Where you train is where you learn how to say, I know this, I've done this, I've got this, I'm ready. So you can surpass expectations when they say you're hired. At Liberty University, you'll train in world-class facilities as you prepare for a world-class career. You might have heard some things about Liberty University, like how we're just a little Christian school in the middle of nowhere, and there's nothing to do here. I mean, come on, you know us, boring. Boring? Yeah. They say we don't work as hard, think as hard, try as hard. I object. The truth is, well, we might surprise you. A college education needs to work at your speed. Let's get you on track at Liberty University. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Sorry to disappoint you, though. We're pretty much out of time. <laughs> hey, if you missed any stories you want to check out, libertyflamecentral.com. Go to the website. And it's almost tournament time, so be sure you keep it locked here and yeah. check in the Flame Central podcast powered by Alcova Mortgage. We'll have some great stuff coming your way. We will. She's Emily. I'm Matt. Thank you so much for watching. We'll plan on seeing you right back here next week.